substance use disorders presented by CNS Healthcare. I am your host, Nancy Gandalo, Chief Marketing and Outreach Officer. We want everyone to know your mental health matters and it's okay to not be okay. Joining us on Bright Spot today is Sarah Scanton Burlow, Physician Assistant at CNS Healthcare. She will be talking about kids and anxiety. Welcome, Sarah. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's dive right into this important topic. Well, I'm Sarah Scantabrillo. I've been a physician assistant uh, since 2010 in psychiatry, working primarily uh, in CMH capacity. Prior to that, I have an MSW and I'm also working on my PhD right now in social policy and practice with a concentration in mental health stigma and a minor in medicine looking really digging into where does mental health stigma come from and how can we deconstruct these socially constructed barriers so people can get the access that they need. Wonderful. I know that we're talking about kids and anxiety today, so why don't we jump right in and you uh, maybe could tell us what's happening with kids in anxiety and how the past two years have really um, exacerbated that, for lack of a better word? If you look at these statistics, whether you're looking at um, for the United States or you're looking at the World Health Organization, there has always been a disparity between mental health and physical health. Somehow, as I already said, like there's a lot of social constructions when it comes to mental health, we separate those two when we put them in their own silos, when really they are so interrelated. I try to explain it to patients. Think about uh, pieces of sand. When you have colored sand, like when you go to the fair and you mix up your sand in the thing and you're pushing your pencil down to get a nice design, you are never separating those. Like once again, once they're mixed, that is how mental health and physical health are. They are very strongly connected. And I feel like this is the one time as a uh, a society, we will be able to look back and say that the pandemic has impacted every single person. None of us have come out unscathed. Looking at the numbers before where they would say one in five people experience a mental health issue, looking at the statistics for suicide, they have astronomically just been ramping up. And one of the major symptoms that people are presenting to me with, particularly adolescents and our little people, is anxiety. And could you just tell us some ways um, in which they're presenting that anxiety so uh, parents and adults know what to look for in children and adolescents? Many times our mental health symptoms aren't very clearly identified as a mental health symptom. What I'm looking at when people come to see me, a lot of times people will say, I've had a stomach ache for X amount of months and we've been unable to figure out what's going on. Uh, it, everything else has been medically cleared or people have headaches. People will feel a sense of despondency. They're not feeling energized about things that they used to like they have a lot of trepidation or fear, or they're very much caught up in the what ifs. And that very much stagnates them to no further growth or development because they're, they're trapped in their own anxiety bubble. And how do you help children um, get out of their anxiety bubble? Or what can we do um, when they are not with a therapist or a licensed practitioner um, to help them ease their anxiety and really focus on other things? The first thing that I think is really important is anxiety oftentimes gets a very negative connotation. Anxiety is actually good and helpful to a certain degree. Anxiety is what has that fight or flight uh, syndrome, what helps keep us safe when we are getting that gut feeling that something's not right. It sends that flux of those stress hormones to keep us elevated and focused. Extrapolating that a few hundred years, we're not chased, getting chased by bears in the forest. 
but we do have to have that slight degree of anxiety entering into a testing situation, going into an interview, because that what that is what keeps us on our colloquial A game and to be focused and be ready for rapid fire questions or finishing up that essay and in, in an exam situation for a kid. Where it becomes problematic is when it's negatively impacting their quality of life, where this is, as I mentioned earlier, paralyzing them in that bubble. The thing that's important to realize, though, is it's not just how uh, medicine is. We, with physical medicine, we look at the qualitative and quantitative symptoms that are going on and find a medication regimen or some type of therapeutic regimen that's going to fit those symptoms. It is, we already said, mental health and physical health, it's the same deal. When someone comes in with anxiety, we don't just say, oh, well, this is the medication for that, or that's what you should do. We need to start peeling those onion layers back, find out what is the etiology of this anxiety. Was there trauma in the past? Was, is there perhaps a genetic component where our little people are learning um, behavioral aspects of responding to maybe adversarial stimuli? And we need to work on behavioral skills. It, we need to know why to understand the how, but there's so many different options with behavioral therapy, talk therapy, learning different coping skills for our toolbox. So when we do have these moments where we feel like we're paralyzed in our bubble, um, little tricks that I teach some of my people just to complement the medication regimen that I'm doing with them is to understand that mind and body uh, connection and not be a dog chasing its tail. The dog is excited, it's chasing its tail. Its tail is moving, the dog's getting excited. It's the same thing with anxiety. We mentally feel anxiety. Then our heart rate goes up. We have that physiological response. That's not a bad thing. That's what kept us safe before, like we said, but we need to learn to temper it because once your body starts feeling anxious, then your mind starts going, your mind is going. So your body is responding, the dog chasing its tail. We need to learn little tricks. I'll tell people, put your hand on your shoulder, watch your respirations. A lot of times our heart is beating like this and our chest is going like this. We, we need to return to that mind-body connection. Another piece, and slow down our breathing. In through the nose, out through the mouth. It may sound simplistic, but I guarantee anybody listening, the next time they feel elevated and they do that, they'll be like, holy Toledo, that did make a difference. Another trick that I personally use is looking around us, trying to find something that we can see, hear, and touch to kind of ground us in that physical environment moment versus allowing our thoughts to be that runaway train. Can you what, give an example of that? Because I've used that often, you know, what can I see, touch, hear, taste, and smell? Um, another one that was taught to me is, you know, peace begins with me. Um, especially if I'm driving, right? And you tend to feel anxiety with crazy drivers and you can just really like silently say that to yourself, like peace begins with me and it really grounds you. But I do, um, if you could elaborate kind of on the touch, see, hear. It, it allows us to get out of, I'll just keep using my same example, that anxiety bubble. Because when you're trapped in there, you're, only, you're trapped in your thoughts. And you're trapped in that, the dog chasing its tail. I, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I'm going to pass out. Everything is going on. This is awful. But once you're able to implore your other symptoms to start, or excuse me, your other senses to start working, it allows you to recenter. And instead of being only trapped in your mind bubble to be able to 
Okay, re return to your environment. We you breathe in and out. Okay, my mom is making cookies right now. That's an amazing smell. Um, I I'm petting my a, a cat, my dog. I, anything that's going to help us refocus, but also certain things that we do can release those good neurotransmitters, those healthy ones. Um, just like what taste, think if we think of our uh, sense of taste, many of our happy neurotransmitters are in our stomach, which was something we don't think about. Our, we have a, gobs of serotonin receptors in our stomach. So that makes sense when you think about, oh, well, I always feel better like, you know, talking with friends and then we have brownies or cookies and you're releasing those happy neurotransmitters. So that butterflies in your stomach feeling when you, when I buy a pair of boots and you get excited. We, we want to be able to employ those other senses so we can escape that one track thought in our mind and, and ground us in the environment and not the situation. Great, and um, obviously not everybody that experiences anxiety needs medication, although many who have anxiety need medication, but could you talk about the people that might have lower levels of anxiety and um, how they might be treated or how, what they can do at home to help ease anxiety outside of what we've discussed and when really you should seek help for anxiety um, and or mental health issues. As a doctoral student, I always kind of like joke with people because we, we're all about you know, our quantitative results, the scales that we use, making sure that this is a timed and true uh, scientific process. And then here I come in and I give my example of like for the Sarah scale, are you having more good days than bad days? To me, if you're having more bad days than good days, that is definitely a sign like, Hey, maybe it's time that I seek professional advice or seek, talk to somebody else that I can sift through this. Cause a lot of times, regardless of who we are, we can get trapped in our thoughts and we can make things much worse or much better than it is. And being able to have an objective outsider that has a theoretical training and can help get you aligned with the goals that you have for yourself, I, th I think is crucial. Anytime that the more bad days than good days, but where your quality of life is being stunted or you don't feel that you're in control of your mind, I think is a very good measure to reach out. Maybe it's a situation where you learn a few coping skills that are applicable and work in your life. Terrific. If not, then people often come to see me discuss to discuss if medication options are warranted or needed. Wonderful. Um, if you're just joining us, this is Bright Sprott, your community connection to wellness presented by CNS Healthcare. We are speaking to Sarah Scantenberlo, physician assistant about kids and anxiety. Sarah, I guess the other thing is, so if you have a younger child, right, who might not be able to articulate as well how they're feeling, um, who's had a stomach ache for, you know, on and off for the past couple of months, you've ruled out any physical issues. Um, it would seem to me that then perhaps they should be calling to try to see a therapist or somebody because it in all likelihood could be anxiety or something um, with their mental health masking as physical health, correct? Correct. But not only does physical health mask as mental health often, no, flip that, mental health is physical health, our physical health directly impacts our mental health as well. And that's something that I think is often overlooked that we'll, we'll just think, oh, well, that's how I, they're just finding some other way to present their symptoms or 
they're not processing well. No, it absolutely has a direct impact on the physiological workings of our, of our brain and our body. When I said earlier, yes, the fight or flight is amazing. It keeps us safe in these dangerous situations. But when you have that elevated cortisol, elevated norepinephrine going all the time, that absolutely can impact our brain architecture, particularly with our little people when there's trauma involved. And I use the word trauma with a very broad scope because trauma impacts everyone differently. And how we define trauma is different for every person. And understanding that our little people's brains are not fully developed until they're 25, particularly the frontal lobe, where a lot of all this higher executive functioning and being able to really navigate these big people feelings in these little bodies, it, it can be very, very daunting. And personally, I think everybody needs therapy. I think we all would benefit from having someone that is, like I had mentioned, that objective outsider that has the theoretical training to be able to help us na navigate our thought processes. Everything we eat, breathe, do, where we live, the people that we hang out with, everything impacts how we perceive our environment. I don't know if anybody else uses this with their children, but I tell my kids there's always three sides, your side, their side, and the truth. So I think that oftentimes it's very good, no matter who we are, that we work on just becoming better humans with each other through therapy. You don't have to have something specific to go in to talk about. And what are some practical tips for parents or resources that exist at CNS Healthcare that could help children? We have our children's I, I program. I'm sure there's a much more articulate way to say that, but we have a children's program for those 17 and under, and we have therapists. And then they also can come to see me. Oftentimes they will come to see me regardless to do an initial psych evaluation, just to make sure we have a good foundation and baseline down. Because not only that, it doesn't mean that you're going to have medication when you come to see me, but I want to make sure that everything is being documented because our school system, the way that everything is set up, how we learn, everybody learns differently. We all have different and unique needs. If I can do anything to help a child be able to navigate their educational foundation better for the rest of their life, why not? Great. And is there anything else you'd like to add that we should all know about helping children and managing anxiety? I tell my children all of the time, it is okay to feel what you're feeling. It is okay to cry. You can't have good unless you know what bad is. You, it helps us recenter and refocus. Telling our little people that it is absolutely okay and warranted to feel a particular way, but we are in charge of our emotions. We can feel things, but what we do with that superpower is what makes the difference. It, it's I think it's very helpful because it allows our children to have a sense of autonomy over themselves. I, you know, a lot of our kids, I, I don't know how everybody else does it, but I'm like, pick this up, do this. You didn't do this. Get your book bag ready. Did you pack your snack? They're always being told what to do and when to do it. And I want to be able to, I, I tell my kids, like your emotions are your superpower. What you choose to do with it and how you choose to use it and navigate the rest of your day is what is a like a, a mark of your maturity. And if you need help and you don't understand something, please come to me and talk, we'll talk about it. It's just as I said with adults, we all need therapy. Our, our kids need help navigating it, but I want to be able to do it in a way that empowers 
them, but also and give allows them the autonomy to make decisions for themselves. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I really love that your emotions are your superpower. Um, I hope that stays with everyone throughout the week. Thank you to everyone who joined us live for Bright Spot presented by CNS Healthcare. We hope you will mark your calendars and continue to join us at noon on Mondays to discuss feelings, struggles, and finding one's way. If there are any topics you would like to discuss or uh, elaborate on, please drop a comment in the chat or comment on this video. And just a reminder, we will select one winner of a $25 Amazon gift card on next week's episode of Bright Spot. So please take the time to fill out our two question survey that's listed in the chat. Before I sign off, I just wanna remind everyone to be a bright spot. You never know when a smile, a compliment, or simply a kind word can change a person's day. Thank you again for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.